기름. Hello, fellow Jerry cans. So I just got up after watching the most recent Pokemon Presents video from yesterday night. So I thought I would do a quick video telling you guys my thoughts on it. I thought about doing the highlight video of the live reaction, but there's a lot of new information to process and think about from this Pokemon Presents that I want to share with you guys. So here's a quick scripted video. I'll talk about my thoughts on Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, then Pokemon Legends Arceus separately. No, I'm not going to talk about the free-to-play Pokemon, free-to-play Pokemon, and free-to-play Pokemon. Let's get started. Well, I was worried they were going to ditch the chibi graphics, but they didn't do that, so I don't have to delete my video. Hooray! Well, the graphics look better, and thank god. I noticed they lightened up the world compared to the previous trailer, and that's something I really liked. They added a shit ton of bloom effects everywhere, and I think that was a good idea because it makes the game look like a miniature toy playset, and they basically ripped that off from the 2019 Link's Awakening remake. Hey, in my last video, I said BDSP graphics should go with the chibi look because Sinnoh is a land built on tiles, narrow paths are everywhere, and Game Freak can only animate people turning around like they're stuck in 2D. But well, based on the footage I saw today, I think my opinion is validated even more, and some parts of the map really look good. Now, I am still really pissed off because all the characters are still wearing the same clothes, and now they revealed every gym leader, Team Galactic Grunt, is wearing the same clothes they were 15 years ago, which is disappointing. Pointing. Even Cyrus looks exactly the same. Like, did they reuse the model from USUM? However, I was glad to see we got character customization, buying new clothes, so we don't have to wear the shitty default clothes. Now, logically, the Pokemon Platinum clothes should be an option in the game, but I think it'll be pretty funny if the Platinum clothes are not in the game, because Game Freak wants everyone to forget about Pokemon Platinum. I bet they're gonna treat it like it never existed. They're gonna be trying to erase history like it never happened, sort of like Belgium with Congo, or an incident in 1989 in Let's talk about the Sinnoh Underground. In my past video, I said I wanted this thing to be like a mini online Pokemon MMORPG, but it seems the online features are all going to be put in the boring ass union room, so that kind of sucks. However, we got these mute areas in the underground where a bunch of Pokemon live that roam in the overall like in the Let's Go games. Interesting concept, I don't know if it will be good though. Catching a shit ton of Pokemon that are available is boom or bust because it can be really fun like it was in Pokemon Oras, or feel like a chore and be plain fucking boring like it was in Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I'm going to have to get my hands on it to see if it's good. Now, I pointed this out on Twitter, go follow it, har har, but Bido's Pokedex number in the screenshot is 399, meaning they're numbering the Pokemon by national dex number. This is really interesting because it could mean a crap ton of things. My assumption and sort of hope on this is all 493 Gen 1-4 Pokemon are in the game and are available to catch. I saw someone point out that Numo, who was not part of the original DP or even Platinum Dex, was in the underground cave thingies, so I think my theory is correct. However, I worry that this means we're only going to see Gen 1-4 to Pokemon, because one of the best perks of a damn remake is being able to use new Pokemon, evolutions, and forms introduced in the later games. Using Gen 4-6 to Pokemon like Gallade and Oras was so nice, and I want that for Sinnoh as well is asking for Gen 5 to 8 Pokemon in BDSB. Too much to ask for. However, let a man dream, please. What if we have all Gen 1 to 4 Pokemon in the main campaign, and have Gen 5 to 8 Pokemon in the post-game area? Imagine this game having over 800 Pokemon and Legends Arceus having only 150. Now that'll be a riot. Speaking of the post-game area, the Pokemon official website released a map of the Sinner region for the game. And the first thing I saw was that the Battle Frontier, of course, is not there. WHERE THE HELL IS IT?! I think the tiny speck is the Battle Tower, and that's a damn bummer. They're really trying to erase history because this was the last chance ever to get a Battle Frontier again. I can't wait to see a miniature of the Sinnoh Battle Frontier in the fight area. The other new feature is the Pokemon Contest. Like I said, I never cared about Pokemon Contest in the original games, so I was even okay if it was completely gone in the remake. But it seems they're adding a rhythm game mechanic to it, and rhythm games are perfect as mini games because they're simple but fun when done right, so it could be good. The Pokeball series are also back. I speculated on how they were gonna put that in a 3D game, but they're actually bringing it back, which is kinda cool. That's about it. To be honest, I see a lot of improvements and new features that might be good, but I still don't think it warrants a $60 price tag though. We are in a similar situation as we were in Oras which means the new features are good and dandy, 
but it still doesn't pale compared to Pokemon Emerald, or in this case, Pokemon Platinum. It seems like Pokemon Platinum is the more superior Sinnoh game than BDSP, and nothing yesterday changed my mind on that. That being said, they can still release new information. I wonder how they're going to treat Giratina in this game, because it will be awesome if you get an episode Delta treatment with Giratina in the Distortion world. I still have no clue how they're going to handle Shaman, Darkrai, and Arceus in this game too, so maybe we'll get some news about that in the upcoming months. It's still too early to judge the game, folks. Anyways, that's my thoughts on BDSP. Looks better, some features look interesting, but still not convinced it's better than Platinum. I think many people will disagree with me on this one, but in my heart, I believe Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl will be a better game than Legends Arceus, and there's a high chance Legends Arceus could be a shit game. BDSP is still a remake of a game with some foundation, as in if they keep the map design faithful as the original games, it will be still be fun and fast to explore. Legends Arceus on the other hand is such a mute attempt, since it's the first open world Pokemon game, and I don't have much faith with open worlds with Game Freak. Like history wise, Game Freak was never been good with Mew Tech. The first non 8 bit game, Ruby and Sapphire, was bland. The first game with 3D overworld, Diamond and Pro, was shit. First 3D game, X and Y, was shit. First main console game, Sword and Shield, was shit. So the first open world Pokemon game, Legends Arceus? Based on these past records, boy oh boy, I don't like those odds. And second, the trailer and footage they showed me was kinda baffling. Yes, I like the mute town and the mute characters, the story could be interesting, and female Cyrus' grandma is fucking hilarious. If she isn't an obvious twist villain like Guesses, Lissandre, Uzamine, and Rose, then I'll be surprised as fuck. Second, I have to hand it for them for trying to implement a real-time strategy element to Pokemon. The fact that you have to actually aim and throw the Pokeball is interesting, and hopefully not motion controls like Let's Go Games, and I think actually throwing your Pokemon with a Pokeball into battle looks fun. The battle system, however, is getting needlessly complicated? I thought having 18 Pokemon types with different elements is fine enough, but now we have Agile style and Strong style or something? You can also choose to have Pokemon use their moves in two different styles, Strong style and Agile style. Using a move in the Strong style will increase the move's power, but the Pokemon's action speed will be lowered. Like my mind and brain was confused when they were talking about this part because I couldn't understand a word what the lady was saying and my chat was too. I think I'm going to have to try it out myself to see if I can get a hang of it. But that seems like a weird mechanic that might be almost needless to be added in. Oh, but being actually attacked as a human if you're Pokemon of Faint is kinda cool. I guess USGM guess is gonna have a field day with that. And it seems there's a crafting system in there because we are ripping off other open world games and other open world games like Minecraft have it. You have to gather stones and apricots for making Pokeballs, which means you can't just buy them from a store. I'm worried this might mean we're gonna have to constantly farm stones and apricots in this game because catching Pokemon seems to be the main focus, which will be tiresome. The Mew regional forms look cool, Stanzler finally getting some love is cool. Come to think of it, I swear to god if these regional forms aren't in BDSP as well, it'll be the most big brain game freak moment. Like if you can trade over the Mew Pokemon in this game to BDSP through Pokemon Home, wouldn't consumers subscribe to Pokemon and you'll make money from that? Isn't that an actual smart business decision, Pokemon Company? Anyways, the battle and catching Pokemon was the only thing that looked interesting, but the main concern is this. The map design and the world looks so fucking boring. And no, it's not because of the textures or graphics. What I only see in the trailer is just barren landscape and barren landscape and barren landscape, with very little monuments or places of interest to see. What I'm worried about this game is this is just going to be a season 2 of Sword and Shields' wild area. Just bland, empty open spaces that are needlessly big with no reason to explore. Just endlessly catching Pokemon after Pokemon without anything interesting happening, which is going to be repetitive real fast. I saw that you could actually ride Pokemon so traveling might be pretty easy, but still, it looks empty and barren. Let's compare that to Breath of the Wild. Even though Breath of the Wild is a big fucking map that might be open and barren at first, but the developers were smart with it because the world is filled to the brim with shrines, abandoned villages, enemy camps, caves, treasures, mineral veins, story events, boss battles, and especially Korok seeds puzzles everywhere. There's not one space in the map in Hyrule that you could call empty. 
this game? The only thing I see is barren land and trees everywhere, and the only place of interest they showed off are the camps which are basically a Pokemon Center and Pokemart, and a main town, sort of like Skyward Sword is boring anti sky with only Skyloft being interesting. You see my concern? I don't see a reason to explore this big fuck off map except to catch Pokemon, and just catching Pokemon has no substance and will be boring very quick. Of course, I could be wrong though. My hope is they only showed off the catching mechanic today, and they saved up a lot of new info until the release. Like maybe there will be like a gym system in the game that forces you to explore or like Breath of the Wild shrine system. Hopefully there are more villages other than the ones they showed off, and it's not an empty hollow experience like Kalara's wild areas. Hmm, what more is there to say? I thought it was hilarious they announced that BDSP and Legends Arceus wouldn't support competitive battling. That Game Freak guy literally said the sentence, Competitive Pokemon stands can go fuck off and just play Sword and Shield, in the most nicest way possible. And as a person who hates competitive Pokemon, I think that was pretty hilarious. Anyways, that's my thought on the games. I would compliment Game Freak and the Pokemon company cause it looks like they're actually trying this time and taking a risk. However, I'm still not convinced if those risks will pay off, but Game Freak may prove me wrong. And I hope I'm wrong and my worries are invalid because I want the games to be good. Like, I'm not an asshole that wants Pokemon to fail, I'm just pointing out my worries and that's what people want to hear me talk about. Well, those were my thoughts and I'll see you later when I make the next video, which will probably be the Pokemon Black and White review. I'm also going to be streaming Pokemon Omega Ruby to Nuzlocke because I would like to play that game and review it before BDSP comes out, because comparing to see which is the better remake will be fun and interesting. So check out my community tab for that. That's it, and I'll see you guys later.